Hey guys, I'm going to go over the uh, the jumpers uh, analysis lab analysis with you um, for to figure out how high Walter White can jump. Now, as you recall, we had uh, let's see if we can move me up here a little bit. There we go. Um, for our data, we wound up with a curved plot when we made a graph of the mass of the jumpers versus how high they went. Uh, and when we plotted all those points, we got a curve that looked something like this. Now, this is not the data from your class. This is a set of data that I've created for this, for this exercise. But it's very comparable to yours, and the concepts are exactly the same. Now, uh, we had two tasks, as you recall. Uh, we need to figure out how high Princess Leia could jump. And she was pretty easy to figure out because she was within the, um, within the data set. Uh, there were some jumpers that were heavier in her, than her and others that were lighter, and that meant that we could just see where she fell in the data set and just read it right off. So Princess Leia was easy. It was just a matter of interpolating. Uh, Walter White is more difficult because he was significantly heavier than any of the other jumpers. And for this example here, I'm going to say that Walter White is uh, weighing 45 grams. So we'll call him Walt Jr., um, which is far away from the end of our data set. And the problem is that we can't reliably extend the curve uh, so that we can make a, an, a reasonable, realistic estimate of what he has. So when we plot this, we wind up with a best fit line that comes down like this. Now, I know your data was more scattered than this. That's fine. The point is that you got a best fit line that you could use for your predictions. And out here off the end, there's not a whole lot we can do. So what I said, what I introduced in class today was that we would uh, be able to transform the data um, to turn this curved plot into something that is more straight and therefore more useful. So this is the data that I used for this. Again, this is stuff that I just kind of put together to, um, uh, for the purposes of this, let's get this focused again. There we go. That's better. All right. And as you can see, uh, for 3.5 grams, this is the mass in grams across the bottom. For 3.5 grams, we have 48 centimeters height. For 5, 33 centimeters, and so on down the line. That's, uh, that's where the, the plot comes through. So uh, we are working on the assumption here that this looks sort of like an inverse relationship. An inverse relationship is where y is equal to 1 over x. And even if that isn't exactly the relationship, it's kind of like it. And if we transform our data to fit this, then um, we may wind up with a straighter uh, curve, a straighter curve. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take 48, the, we're going to transform the height, and we're just going to take the inverse of the 48 centimeters. So we do 48, we do 1 over x, and we wind up with 0 0.021. I'm rounding off 0 0.0208 to 0 0.021. Now, this is just a number that is useful for us. It doesn't really represent anything in the real world. If you really uh, want to know what the units are, it's inverse centimeters or centimeters to the minus one uh, centimeters to the minus one um, it's just a number which is useful for us and when we graph it we get meaningful information now you do this for every single one of the heights that we have so for 33 centimeters we do one over x we get 0 0.0303 that's the the number that we get when we take the inverse for uh, 20 centimeters, we get 0 0.050. Uh, coming on down to 9 or 8, 9, we get uh, 9 centimeters, 1 over x is 0 0.11, and so on. And we've done this for all of the numbers, for all of the heights, for all of our, uh, for all of our samples. Okay? Now, the next step is to make another graph. We think that we can make a straight line if we plot the mass versus this transformed number. So for convenience, I'm going to do it on the same page here. Um, and we have to look at our range of numbers that we have to uh, be able to deal with. And the largest one is 0.25, and it drops down to something close to zero here. So on the, I'm going to use the same mass scale. 
Um, but for the heights, I'm going to put in other uh, put in another scale for its so it's convenient for me. So I'm going to make this right here 0. 0.25 because that's the biggest number we have. And I'm putting this in the middle of the page so that there's room for Walter to fit on this line that we create. And I think that that will become self-evident when we when we move forward a little bit here. Okay, uh, the smallest um, is um, 0 0.021, which is going to be way down here. Okay, so this is 0 0.25. This is 0 0.20. This is 0 0.10. And this is still zero. Okay. So let's uh, do some plotting here. And when we have 3.5 grams, 1, 2, 3.5 grams, we have 0 0.021. So that is 0 0.021 right here. So this is like 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, 0 0.10. That's, uh, that's how, we, how we do this. Um, some students get a little confused about how these numbers fall in. So it might be useful to look at this as um, 10, 20, 25. And this would be 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12, and so on on up. Okay, but this is where our convenient plot, our transformed uh, data comes out. 5 is on 0 0.30, 7 is on 0 0.05, um, 10 is on 0 0.067, so 6, a little less than 7, so right there. And then we get up to 14 is right on 0.1, so 14 is right on 0.1, happens to be the same as that one right there. That's a coincidence, just happens. 16 grams goes to 0.11, so that is right here. 19 grams goes to 0.125, so that's 10, 12, and a little bit more right there. 20 grams goes all the way up to 14.14. 14. 23 grams, that's here, goes up to 0.17, so we have 20, 18, 17 right there. Uh, let's see, 27 is right on the 0 0.20, which is this, let's see, 17, that is, let's see, 27, let's see, 23, 27, 25, 26, 27, there we go, and 0 0.20, there it is, right there. And then finally, 29, we get all the way up to 0.25, which is right there. Okay, um, so we plot all the dots. Now, as you can see, this is not a perfectly straight line, but it's a whole lot straighter than the one that we had before. So it's not perfect, but it's an improvement. And if we use this straight line to make our prediction for Walt, we can be more confident than we would be if we were just tried to extend this curve in some way. Okay, so we'll do best fit through our straight lines here, through our straight, uh, through our data points, something like that. That looks fairly reasonable. It's pretty straight. Now we come over here to 45 grams, which is where Walt Jr. is, which puts us right here. So the transformed number, if you will, for uh, Walt of 45 grams, we come across and we find it is 0.36. 0.36, using the same scale, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 246, it's about 0.3, yeah, about 0.36 right there. All right, now that is just the number, so for 45 grams, I'll put it up here, for 45 grams, we get 0 0.36. That is the transformed number for Walt. So if we want to get back to the actual height, we need to undo what we did to make all the numbers in this column. So all we do is we take the inverse of that number. So 0.36, and we're going to do 1 over x, and we get 2.8 centimeters. 
2.777, that's about 2.8 centimeters. That's very clearly written there. Let's uh, 2.8 centimeters. Now, if you're not sure about whether you're doing the right thing to undo the, uh, um, the transformation, you can just try some of these numbers right here. So like we transformed 20 into 0 0.05. So we got 0 0.05. And to undo it, we just hit 1 over x. And yes, that brings us back to 20. So we know we're doing the right process. Um, 0.125, if we do 1 over x, that brings us back to 8, which is the actual height. Um, so that means that we get 0.36 on this long straight line. All we have to do is 0.36, take the inverse, and that gives us an answer, about 2.8 centimeters. And that's our, that's our answer. Now, the last step is to see, well, is this answer reasonable? Now... The heights here originally, this is 10 centimeters, 20, and so on. And our trend line is coming down closer and closer and closer to zero as we go along. And it seems reasonable that an answer of three centimeters, which is right about here, that that is about what we would expect. So this is a reasonable answer, and we can accept that is true. So we would say, yep, uh, Walt's going to jump, uh, yeah, 2.8 centimeters, like we said. Remember, it's important to show how you did it, briefly explain your process and how you make this transformation. Say, hey, yeah, it makes a straight line, which is easier to, uh, to extend, and uh, just briefly explain your process. So what I don't want to have is you just have a number, which may be the same as your friends or something. You have to um, be able to articulate how you arrived at that answer. Okay, I hope that was helpful. This is do remember uh, uh, the start of next class period for both uh, Princess Leia and for uh, Walt. Um, you'll do this process with your actual real data. You'll get a different answer than this because your data is, I mean, this is made up. The actual Walt is gonna do something different. Um, so uh, yeah, that's due at uh, the start of next class. Good luck and uh, we will see you then.